I am a final year medical student at BJMC Pune and studying has been a huge part of my life. In this video, I'm going to give you amazing science based tips that are going to skyrocket your focus and studies. I have always wondered if I was using the right study techniques. In order to achieve amazing academic results, you need to have a good memory and it is heavily dependent on your ability to focus. This is how your memory works. There is an area in your brain called the hippocampus which is mainly involved in forming memories. If your hippocampus gets damaged, either you will not be able to form new memories or your older memories would be erased. This is what we call amnesia in medical terms. Various neurons in your brain connect in a specific order to form memories and whenever there is a stimulus for it, you are able to retrieve that information. Let's say you're listening to a song for the first time, your neurons will be wired in such a way in order to form a new memory. And every single time you listen to the song, the neuronal connections will get stronger and stronger and slowly you will be able to remember the lyrics to the song. But your ability to learn is also dependent on the ease of the task. For example, learning an English song or a Hindi song is way easier than learning a Latin song. This is because it is easier to learn a new piece of information if your mind can take that piece of information and establish various connections and associations with it with information that you already have. Let's say if I ask a 10th grade student and a final year med student to learn the steps of a heart surgery, even if it is the same amount of information it will be way easier for the med student to learn the steps of the heart surgery because of his previous knowledge of anatomy and various other topics that he can use in order to make associations in his brain and these associations will help him understand learn and memorize this information better than the 10th grader so what we can learn from this is to go from known to unknown start with what you know build your foundations and slowly graduate to what you don't know creating some sort of mind map could help with this where you associate different pieces of information with each other so that the entire picture actually makes sense. As students, we often think that it would be amazing if we could just remember everything. Suppose you're traveling somewhere, would you remember every single license plate? Would you remember every single face that you saw on the way? No, right? But instead, if you see and meet Virat Kohli, you will remember that day and that moment for the rest of your life. This is how the mind works. It is programmed to forget most of the sensory input that we get. And this is why it is important to know how we forget. There are three ways in which our brain forgets. Number one, passive oblivescence. The neurons in our brain which were used to store a particular information are simply used in order to store some other bit of information. And this is exactly the reason why you don't remember useless facts from your school day. For example, random geography facts that you had to learn for your school exams. So if you think that a piece of information is important to you, you can use techniques such as active recall in order to make those neuronal connections stronger. You can use tools such as flashcards in order to remember the most important and volatile information about a topic. The second type of memories are target memories. Target memories are useless memories that we form during the day. For example, what you had for breakfast 15 days back. And the third type of forgetting is motivated forgetting in which we suppress bad memories. This is the kind of forgetting that comes in handy when you want to forget a bad breakup. Now that we know why we forget, let's move on to how we remember. The three basic ways in which we remember stuff is recall, recognize and relearn. The best example of recall is fill in the blanks. The best example of recognition is MCQs, where you recognize the correct option that you had previously learned out of all the options that are given to you. And the third way in which we remember things is relearning. This is when you refresh your memories a few weeks before your exams. When you study something for the first time, it might take you an hour. When you study something for the second time, it will take you less time and subsequent readings will be faster and faster. The next way is stored recall. This is exactly how we remember temperature of boiled water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And the next type of memory is working memory or short term memory. This is really comparable to the RAM that is there in a computer, which helps you store a limited bit of information, but can easily forget it. 
This is the memory that had probably worked when you learned something just 5 minutes before the exam and completely forgot it after the exam. In order to form new memories, you need to capture them first. This is where your sensory system comes into play. This mainly focuses on your audiovisual pathway. In order to focus on a book in front of you, your eyes need to converge. Your pupils need to shrink in order to focus on the word that you are reading. And all of this is mediated by the parasympathetic system in your brain. So basically there is the sympathetic system which is the flight or fright system and there is the parasympathetic system which is the rest and digest pathway. And when these actions are performed by your body, various neurochemicals or neurotransmitters are released in your brain which promote memory formation. In order to practice and master this kind of focus, you can focus on a piece of object that is kept at a hand's length away from you and you can do this for 60 to 120 seconds and you can do this for multiple rounds. This is how meditation works. You train your mind to focus on a single thing, for example your breath. Every time your mind gets distracted, you use your breath as an anchor point and you fix your attention or you bring your attention back to your breath. You simply can't completely eliminate distracting thoughts from your mind. You need to acknowledge your distraction and gently bring the attention back to your focus point. And like any skill, with practice this becomes easier. Now the question arises on how long to focus. Well, the scientific literature suggests that you should focus for 90 minutes followed by a 20 minute break. In that 90 minutes, you can give yourself around 5 to 10 minutes to warm up and then your focus can be at its peak and then it will gently come down and you will take your break. You can boost your focus with caffeine which is an adenosine antagonist. But you need to stop consuming caffeine 12 hours before you go to bed because then it will interfere interfere with the depth of your sleep and if your sleep quality is hampered, your memory forming processes and your ability to focus can reduce which in turn might lead you to increase your caffeine intake and this could lead to a vicious cycle where your overall productivity will slowly keep decreasing. The next amazing and free tool is sleep. Nothing can beat a good night's sleep. If you don't have the time to sleep or take a nap, you can use something called as NSDR which is non-sleep deep rest. Now let's come to one of the most controversial topics. Should you listen to music while focusing or studying? Well, the first type of music that could actually help you study is steady beats. Steady beats can block out distractions and intrusive noise by anchoring your brain to a predictable rhythm. They hold your attention because they are repetitive enough to become subconsciously predictable. This is the basis of lo-fi, deep house and progressive beats. The next type of music is white noise. Studies have found that listening to white noise actually increases dopamine in certain areas of your brain. There is a whole range of noises that you can explore including more familiar ambient sounds like rainfall and thunder. Whether you should listen to music or not also depends on your sensitivity to music. Various studies suggest that introverts are more sensitive to noise while studying than extroverts. If this is the case, just try studying with softer music or no music at all. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is worth 60 pictures every second. This can be leveraged in both good and bad ways. If you use tools like video lectures or animated videos in order to learn and remember something, it could completely boost your memory. But if you watch hyper stimulative videos on Instagram and YouTube shorts, it might even hijack your focus and ability to concentrate. So instead of scrolling on social media while taking a break while studying, try going for a walk instead. I hope you guys like this kind of a science and research based video. And if you've made it this far in the video, you should definitely check out this video.